have left in the tank if it comes to the last 400 meters not a lot and the good not much at all and the good thing here is Jess Diggins so there's there's their work share at the front now they're realizing the seriousness that Marit Bjergen is almost on the tails of the skis and they're picking it up again well the fans starting not starting to get excited they've been excited for a long time Bjergen just slightly slower from ski to ski as she trying to get uh, some oxygen into that body before she starts this climb this would be a good place to close it Mike she wants to have what a minute or so's rest before the charge up that final big climb uh, and so she really needs to be in touch by the time they get to the top of this one I think Mari will pull one maybe two seconds back on this climb and then that leaves her just three seconds behind and then she's almost if she could make contact she's really got a chance of winning so she she was 26 seconds behind with 9.1 kilometers to go to the finish she's reduced that to 6.4 the gap isn't closing quite as quickly as it was a couple of minutes ago and that's thanks to Jess Diggins who's gone to the front increased the work rate a little but Kala's still in there Haga's still sitting in third where she's been for the bulk of the race today uh, I, I think you've got to give Haga credit Mike she's not the same caliber or hasn't been over the last five years as Kala and, and Diggins so to, to, to be up there with the two great names is a fantastic display it's a great achievement uh, I, I would yeah but maybe being a little critical but and then I think we alluded to the fact that she probably doesn't have any energy to lead the the, the impact at the front she's just been surviving for the last for well, the last 18 kilometers yeah and, and actually the one the one short spell that Haga did at the front really gave Bjorgen an opportunity to close 27.5 <laughs> 5 left and Marit this is going to be breaking Marit's spirit a little she's not getting any help to close that lead group down from Jakobsen because Jak Jakobsen's on survival six seconds behind last time Sh she's still at six seconds so no gain it's, it's going to have to be a long long charge up uh, the final climb which is actually that hill you just saw in the background there it's still so now a chance to get a little bit of a breather they've got what 30 seconds maximum before the last long climb starts it's still not over by a long way I think I still believe that Marit's going to close this six seconds say uh, it's uh, recovery in her legs I'm and still Marit will find something to attack up this horrible climb still concerned about the speed of uh, Haga's skis Mike uh, it's, it's been a, a, a strange display dropping back 15 metres or so Here goes now Marit Bjorgen goes and uh, this is uh, a good spot to work what about Jakobsen she's hung in there you know <laughs> she's hurting but she's not going to let the great champion get away from her and if she can stay with Bjorgen it might bring her on to the podium because uh, the top three the leading three are certainly not guaranteed a place on today's podium in the Holman Collins Stadium the Diggins. next yeah I'm just thinking the next time uh, Carla makes a move to the front it's going to be an explosive decisive one but they're about to be absorbed by the great amazing Marit Bjorgen 28.5 1500 meters to go it's going to take them just over three minutes to complete that it's a sprint distance race now <laughs> and uh, Bjorgen in her prime was a fabulous sprinter but you it's hard to believe that she's got any fast twitch fibers working at this stage. She has been on 100% for the last 9,000 meters. I can't believe she was offered a drink there. Yes, they need fluids. You need to take 250 <laughs> mils every four <laughs> kilometers, but not right now. It's too serious. I think if they'd offered her a pillow, she might have taken that. Now, oh. has she done enough? Has she left it just that little bit too late? For, for the first time, a bit of a gap between Bjorgen and Jakobsen in fourth and fifth place, and it's still Diggins leading. She certainly deserves to come away with something Mike because she's been the gutsiest skier of all out there today Cala though very canny she's worked when she's needed to she's tucked in when she's thought it's been advisable and Cala really has raced this one to perfection oh she has I'm just thinking what 5.2 million Norwegians there'll be at least 4.7 million watching this and they'll be rooting for Marit Bjorgen she's bridged that gap now she's got the real chance of winning this one from a leading group of three we have four and a half Oh. Jakobsen is not quite there she needs to get in touch before the speed picks up for the final time and now Haga goes in front Bjorgen's gone with her and Diggins suddenly finds herself pushed back down into third position oh it's a shame that any of these women have to miss out on a podium slot maybe they should increase it for this race uh, on its own 
and now Bjorgen keeps the pressure on. She's going for the long ride for home. She's got Keller behind her, who's out sprinted her, out skied her on numerous occasions this season. And Harger still going strong, Mike. Jess Dickens a little trapped at the back there. Uh, Marit Bjorgen is putting the most incredible turn of pace. Kala, I still believe, is going to put on a sting at some point, although we're running out of space. Marit Bjorgen, the absolute strength and that level pacing early on, it's really benefited her now. Six wins on the Holman column 30. Bjorgen did not get involved with the sprints early on, and now she finds oh. herself 10 metres clear. <laughs> Just under a kilometre to go. She can see the famous jump in the background, and when she comes round the corner, all 15,000 in the stadium are going to rise to this woman at 37 years old. She's 38 next week, Marit Bjorgen, and still she outskis the rest of the world. Eight Olympic gold medals, 13 medals in total from the Olympics, in 15, I should say, from the Olympics, and she's come here, she's taken 29.5 kilometres to catch this amazing league group, and she's destroyed them in one move. Phenomenal. Oh, absolutely phenomenal. Intelligent skiing, using her experience, Marit Bjorgen. Six times winner of the Holman Column 30. She's got, uh, what, 112 World Cup wins to her name. She's the most successful Olympian, Winter Olympian of all time. And she's going to make this look easy. But uh, the race is on for second and third, Mike. Keller is still in there. Hager is there. Jess Diggins. Oh, it would be agonizing if the North American lost out on this one because she's been the person who's done the most work but we did suggest in the first 5k you do not want to lead this race come on Jess Diggins but the thing with Jess she's in fourth at the moment she is the ultimate fighting machine there she goes she's never ever going to give in she's going to give everything and it could well be a second yeah she's certainly got a better sprint than uh, Charlotte Caller who's starting to look a little heavy and uh, Ragenhild Hager suddenly finds herself back in fourth in danger of walking away with nothing here today it's Marit Bjorgen now 40 meters clear who would have thought this 26 seconds behind with nine kilometers to go when she pressed the button she really made it pay an astonishing ski and don't forget she did all the hard work jesse diggins gets second <laughs> keller in a photo finish with hager for third i think it was they, hager yeah it may well have been hager we'll see charlotte keller tremendous work from her and jakobsen missing out down in fifth place but uh, what a race I thought yesterday's men's 50 was sensational this was something else and it all came down to pacing Whoa, that was an amazing amazing race Charlotte Caller the Olympic skiathlon champion beaten again by Marit Bjorgen sensational Absolutely sensational. I think, Mike.